once you're happy that you've cleaned it all up, it's time to reinstall these uh, bucket tappets. Now, these, this is the order that they came out, and I'm going to reinstall them in the same order. Because these valves haven't been removed or the seats haven't been cut, I'm confident that these are going to be accurate enough to put straight back in without having to measure the tappet clearances. Um, when these go back in, make sure that they're um, clean. Um, there's a little bit of carbon in on the inside. That doesn't bother me too much as long as it's not loose. And when we put these in, we're gonna have plenty of oil on them. And just let them, they should just literally just drop in almost on their own. Um, you shouldn't need to force them. Uh, sometimes as you put them in, uh, they do wedge themselves. So just carefully pull it back out and put it back in again. But it should be little to no pressure and they should just fall into place. Um, I found with these, if you actually just squirt a little bit of oil up onto that back wall there, it kind of runs down and sits into that little gap, um, which I think you can't have too much oil when this first starts up. Um, and notice that these, don't know if the camera can pick it up, but you can kind of spin these a little bit. They're not tight in there at all. Um, they're just a perfect fit. Make sure you've had a good look at the cams. Make sure that there's no pitting or damage. Um, make sure that they're clean. These holes in here are clean as well. Um, you cannot mix up the exhaust and the inlet cams. They are different. Um, so make sure that you've laid them out or marked them. Um, there are some codes up in and around here that you can look up if you do mix them up, but it can be a bit of a mess. So before I put that in, again, I'm just gonna put plenty of oil on these surfaces here. Now, most of this, unfortunately, will just run off, but we'll try and get it as oily as we can. Now, this is the other thing that's important to note here. So when we put the cam locking tool in, that um, groove will be sitting in the upper half. So I'm just gonna sit it at the moment, just roughly in that upper half segment. And I'm just gonna be putting some more oil down on all of these journals. Be careful not to let oil go down into the hole. Otherwise it might hydro lock the bolt as you're trying to put it in and you'll get the wrong torque on that. All of these bolt holes need to be cleaned out before we start. Now again, these need to go in the correct order. So if you have a look, there is a numbering system on the top of these. So this is a six, and we go six, seven, eight, nine along the exhaust side. But again, I'm gonna put plenty of oil on this as I go to put it in. I'm also making the number read correctly as I'm facing it. So this is the exhaust cam on this side. Number nine. Before we start, I'm gonna put a bit of oil on these cam lobes here, because um, some of them are gonna press into the tappet there. I just wanna make sure there's plenty of oil. Now I've got all of these started. And I'm just going to gently zip them down with this, just for speed. And I'm just going to stagger it a little bit. I'm not doing these up tight at all, they're just touching the surface. And you can begin to see the cam is pulling down. You want to be careful not to tighten one up too much. Otherwise the cam won't tighten down evenly. And we're gonna tighten these up to eight Newton meters. Um, I'm just gonna do a couple of passes just to make sure that um, it's tightened down evenly. Um, it's very easy to over tighten these. They are a small bolt and it'd be very easy to strip out inside the head. Just do a couple of passes to make sure that you have 
Got them all done. I also like at this point here just to see if I can just turn the cam over a little bit just to make sure it's not binding up at all. Um, and I can feel that that cam can turn quite freely. It's obviously got pressure against the valve springs that I'm fighting against, but it's not bound up in any way. If we look in on the end here, you can see that it naturally sits close to that point of being level, but it's not quite there. Um, that's okay while we're assembling it, but we will have to fix that up obviously later on. Now we'll repeat the process for the inlet cam. Gain plenty of oil. Want to have that orientated that way so that that slot is in the upper quadrant or in the upper half. Now the numbering here, we've got number, number two, number three, number four, number five. Now before I start to tighten this down, I'm just gonna do one more check. And I can see here that these lobes and these lobes are facing away from each other. So there's no chance that they're both open and gonna push those valves into each other. I can see these ones here, the lobes are down. So obviously if I was to tip the head up, I'd see that these two valves are gonna be a little bit open. But looking here, I can see these are gonna be well off. So those valves are gonna be shut. So that's okay. Here, I can see that these ones are gonna press in and open those two valves, but I've got these ones pointing up, so those valves are gonna be open. And again here, I can see that both of these will have it, they're close, but they're still not pressing down on the valves, so these valves aren't gonna bump into each other. So, just wanna double check that before I tighten things down. And again, I'm just gonna go through and torque these up. Now you can actually wait and put these cams in once the cylinder head's bolted onto the engine, but I'm always concerned that I might drop something down some of these holes and it falls in and creates problems. So it's easy just to do it on the bench. The next piece I wanna put on is this bearing cap with the variable valve timing solenoids. Um, it's important to get this as clean as you can. It's also important to make sure that these grooves in here are also cleaned out and not filled with any sort of sealant or silicon. Now what we need to do is apply, apply some sealant to this section, this section and up here, but not in this part here. Otherwise that will squeeze through into this bearing surface and cause us all sorts of grief. You can see that if it's sealed up here, and then we actually have a, a rubber seal that goes around here and then back to here, that that part's actually not a sealing surface to stop oil coming through. So we don't need sealant on there. Now, the type of sealant I'm using here is a liquid type of sealant and um, this stuff is super sticky once you get it on um, if you use silicon here and as it presses together there's a likelihood or a strong likelihood you're going to get silicon down into this section here now this is the oil feed that comes up in here so you really don't want silicon sitting up in this spot now it's also good practice to pull out these solenoid valves make sure that's all been cleaned out in there as well um, this time I've left them in there. I have put a bit of um, compressed air through these just to make sure that they're as clean as they possibly can be. There are some small filters in behind here. Sometimes they get clogged up and can cause you issues. Um, I'm fairly happy that this one is clean and those solenoids are working fine. So I don't want to use a lot of this, but I just will give it a good covering. Now, these two bits of metal pretty well seal up against each other. Um, so pretty well all of this will be squeezed on out. Just wanna make sure there's not excess sitting around there. Now, before I put this down, I will put a little bit of oil, but I just wanna make sure that the oil doesn't end up going onto the surface that I'm trying to seal. So I'm just gonna be very careful and just Very careful and just put a small, small amount of oil here.
I'm just using this just for speed. Now we can torque these up. Now if we look closely here, you can see a little bit of that liquid sealant has just seeped through. I'm quite okay with that amount. Um, we can see that it has sealed up. Um, but we don't want a huge amount that has squirted through. We've got a bit more on the inside here. You can see there's a little bit more that has just squeezed out. But again, look, I'm totally okay with that. And that will dry up in the next um, couple of hours while we're putting the car together. With this cover now in place, we can put a couple of new seals on here. Um, make sure that the inner part of the seal is sitting inward. Just sitting that in place. I've got a nice sort of big socket that just sits nicely onto the seal it's not going to fall down that little gap and i can just give it a bit of a tap in just making sure that it's going in squarely and that's sitting in nicely maybe a couple more taps just on that end So that's just sitting evenly and flush all the way around, so I'm happy with that. With this part done, we're now ready to head back and get the head gasket ready to put this back onto the engine.